Good morning, dear saints. And all you other people out there, hello. Uncle Fester here. <laughs> here to uh, share with you the Word of God, the authorized version of Scripture. I'm going to be reading to you to start from Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. Now, dear saints, again, um, you might not like what you hear coming from me again today. But we do have to remember before we read Proverbs 11, let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. Okay? Okay. Titus, if my fingers would work, okay. Titus chapter 3, verses 9 on to verse 11. From the authorized version of the scriptures, of course. But avoid foolish questions. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. So to be foolish is to behave at. Speak as if you say in your heart there is no God. So, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Okay, because you don't keep the law today to be saved, stay saved, or be right with God. Okay? A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject knowing brethren that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself or we could say a girl <laughs> that is an heretic <laughs> and in verse 11 being condemned of herself you will see the thumbnail, and um, I, before we get to Proverbs 11, I just got to tell you, uh, saints, again, um, fair warning, this is also going to be another harsh rebuke, okay? Um, we were going to go through her one video of Miss Christy Burke. Uh, we were going to go through her one video of five verses that made me lose my faith. You know that one where she's got that look on her face as if she's flatulating? Okay? I couldn't do it, brethren. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I, I've, given that, I've given that little devil, that wicked, vile, stupid, willfully ignorant idiot, I have given that little devil way too much of my time. Okay? Uh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But we are going to be addressing something that she said. Okay? Like I said, I have there is no I believe there is no hope for young Christy. I don't believe there is. She was never saved in the first place. My hope is for you <laughs> atheists, you God lovers. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in a God. Yes, you do, atheist. You believe in yourself. You are your own God. Okay? Okay, you do. You do. The hope is to reach some of you. That is the hope. That is the hope. But we are going to address something that um, that that woman, excuse me, that girl, kind of touches on. We're going to be talking about scriptural free will today. Okay? And as you can see in the thumbnail nail and the title of this video, I will be like the Most High. Okay. So saints, once again, this video is not intended for you. All right? For those of you others, if you have, if you have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version, I invite you to follow me along at what we will be looking at today. If not, listen. I know that the previous video, which will be in the description box, was quite lengthy. And looking at the watch time of it, it, it nobody watches the whole thing. I, I get that. 
the one thing I got to give you atheists out there. Um, number one, very quickly, uh, you use profanity in the comment section, pst, you're, you're gone, blocked, done. That's it. Ain't, ain't playing that. You want to put forth your stupidity, you want to do, say whatever you got to say, go, go ahead, go ahead. See, you atheists, one of you did this, one of you did say this. Uh, you atheists, at least, on them for the most part, don't go to, don't judge, okay? <laughs> All right? So, just to let you know, you, you use profanity, you're gone. You're gone. No, ain't going to tolerate that, okay? You understand? You can say whatever you got to say, or whatever, go ahead, just, you know, boom, shoot yourself in the foot, all you want, okay? You use profanity, you're out of here, okay? All right? Okay? Not even my deadliest enemy uses profanity. He doesn't need to, okay? It just, so, anyway, today is the 11th, and as I encourage the saints, saved people, in a general term, saint is someone who is made right with God, who is right with God, okay? Today, we are saints, saved people. There are, um, there are uh, time of Jacob's trouble, saints, okay? A saint is someone who is right with God, made right with God, that kind of thing, okay? We are saints, all right? I encourage the saints, saved people to, if they can, if they don't have enough time, to at least try to read a proverb a day. You should read more than that, but you should. And, you know, if things are really rough, at least try to read a verse a day. You should do more than a verse, but, you know, to get yourself back onto the horse or whatever, start that, okay? Always encouraging the brethren, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the saints, to read the scriptures, okay? Today is the 11th. We're going to read a little out of the 11th proverb. Verses 1 on verse 6. And I found this very meat for what we're going to be talking about, especially addressing you atheists. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Right there, you know, eternal weight of glory. The Lord Jesus Christ who dwells in the saved, born-again believer. Okay? Absolutely. A false balance is an abomination. You atheists, you, you don't want to believe in the God of the Scriptures, our Father Jesus Christ. You might not want to believe in the cow God of Hinduism or the God of the many gods of Catholicism, but you do believe in a God yourself. It's a false balance. Okay? When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. In Job 28, 28 from the authorized version, he says, quote, And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. All right? So, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. Why? Because a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. A false balance. You believe in yourself. You are of your father the devil. You are your own God. You are, that's a false balance. Okay? All right? The integrity of the upright shall guide them. But the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. I can't even imagine the shock that a lot of you atheists, when you die, and you go to stand before the very one who you reject, the very one who you mock, the very one who you spit upon, the very one that you put on the cross. When you stand before him and give an account to him, I can't imagine the shock you're going to feel when you stand before that very one whom you reject. And listen, like I've told you many times in many videos, your belief on that in and of itself is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. When you die, you're going to give an account of yourself to God. As it is appointed unto men once to die and after this, the judgment, or after that, the judgment, okay? Your belief, well, I don't believe I'm going to, that doesn't matter. Look, atheist, that doesn't matter. 
when you die, you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? So am I at the judgment seat of Christ. So are you at the great white throne. Your belief on that is irrelevant because that is the fact that is what's going to happen. You don't want to believe that? That's fine. That doesn't matter because that's what's going to happen. And then when you stand at the great white throne before the one that you reject, you're going to be made known that you were warned. And may God have mercy on your wretched soul. Let's continue in Proverbs 11. <clears throat> Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Why? Because it's a false balance. Okay? The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Speaking contrary to the God, uh, the God of the Scriptures, my Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11. This is not a coincidence. Okay? And as I say to the devils, and of course you atheists, what say the scripture? Ecclesiastes 11, 9 on the 10. Rejoice, O young man, or young woman, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. Yeah. And in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. And the scriptures tell us if you believe in your own heart, you're a fool. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Okay? Verse 10. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. You know to that Christy Burke and I'm, I'm being serious, no maliciousness, not being facetious. And all to all you atheists and all you devils out there, I hope your life goes well for you. I really do. Apparently, as I have been informed, uh, the stupid head, Miss Christy Burke, is obviously doing quite well for herself. Good for her. Um, and is able to go around the country or some nonsense like that. Um, I hope, I really do, I really do, I hope that your father, the devil, is giving you the most lavish, luxurious, easy life that you could possibly have. I hope your cup runs over. I hope you never uh, have... Uh, a lack of abundance of food. I hope that your bills are always paid. I hope that you are never in any trouble like any other man is. I really mean that. I really sincerely mean that for you. All you atheists and devils. Why do I say that to you? Because this is your best life now. You atheists, you don't believe in heaven, and hell, or, heaven or hell, right? Right? You don't believe in God, so what is it for you? You're going to die and become worm food, right? <laughs> only a fool who says in his heart there is no God, only a fool would believe such a thing. Okay? Well, I, I believe there's something else, but you just don't want to believe in the God of the Scriptures. That's your problem. Okay? That's your problem. This is your best life now. Like that stupid devil Joel Osteen with that blasphemous book, you know, The uh, the Power of I Am, okay? Yeah, um, this is your best life now. Because, see, unless the Lord save you, 
unless you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, which is repentance. You couldn't repent of your sins, and the Lord said, you couldn't repent of your sins even if I held a gun at your head. You couldn't do it. The repentance is turning from one God, yourself, your father, the devil, unto the God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, by being broken of your self-righteousness. Taking responsibility. You put him on the cross, so did I. Okay? And you better be afraid of him. Because unless he saves you, you are going to hell. And you're going to burn forever. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You read Mark chapter 9. Go ahead. From the authorized version, because the Bibles mess it up. The Bibles tell you that it, it, you're going to burn, but just for a moment. It's, they call it soul annihilationism. It's nonsense. Okay? So, this is the best you're going to have. Live it up. <laughs> suckle or suckle that breast that Satan gives you and drink of the wine that he offers you gobble it up up to dosage there kid do it because where are you going to go after this life I don't want that even for my deadliest enemy even though he's going there too I don't want that but that's where you're going you know why? Because you chose to go there. You chose to go there. More on that in a bit. Okay? So, let's now go to Genesis chapter 3. Let's, to, let's for you atheists out there, let's, let's have the Lord describe you. Now, those of you out there who are nominally uh, familiar with Scripture, Scripture, not a Bible. We addressed that in the previous video, okay? Um, the word atheist, atheist, does not appear in Scripture. But he is surely talking about you people. He is. Rather, he's talking about your father, the devil. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Saints, like I said, I'm warning you ahead of time, you may see mean Brad again, okay? But this this is it. I can't stomach that stuff too much, man. I can't. So, saints, you know what we're going over. This video is not intended for you, okay? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. We did cover this in the previous video, but I saw the watch time. You and y'all ain't even making it halfway through the video, so okay. So the first thing of Satan, this is Satan, okay? First thing of Satan in recorded scripture, what's the first thing he does? He questions what God has said. Okay? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. God never said, lest ye die. Okay? He, he never said that. We will... We will be covering that here in a little bit, so don't worry about that. Okay? And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. No, he's not going to die. Right away. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, disobey what God said, then your eyes shall be opened. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Being able to judge for yourself what is good and what is evil. See, before this, man was innocent. They knew nothing of sin. 
the relation between themselves, between uh, Adam and his wife Eve, okay, uh, the relation between man and God was pristine, intact, no sin. God gave them the choice, okay? Look at all this stuff that I got here for you. Look at it all. Oh, you got all that to choose from. You, you, you see that one? See that one? The tree of the knowledge of uh, good and evil. By the way, there were two trees. The tree of life and death. Uh, or what was it? Uh, uh, what was it? Um, yes. And take of the tree of life. Okay? The tree of life. There were two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes, there were more trees than that, but the two specific trees. But he said not to eat from the tree of knowledge, or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? And they did. They did. Okay? Eve made a choice. God knew what was going to happen. But see, God doesn't want a robot. God does not want a robot. If he forces you to love him, then you are indeed a slave, are you not? We're not slaves. We're servants. Okay? And see, you atheists, a lot of the Christians that you hear of, they hear from or whatever, they all call us slaves, right? Right? Slave, Mr. Hunter, by the way, does appear in Scripture twice. Okay? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's twice. But nonetheless, slave does appear in Scripture. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We are servants. We have a choice. God, in His power, has given us the ability to choose. God, right here, right here, you have all this. Eat that. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. And Satan comes around and is like, Yea, hath God said. And think about sin, dear people. The one thing that you instinctively know that you shouldn't do, your flesh wants to do it, doesn't it? Yea, hath God said. And see, man, man, mankind, which, in, which intuits woman as well, because remember, in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And this really irritates you feminazis. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Of man. That's what woman means. Okay? That does not make you a second class. Not at all. That does not make woman second class in any way, shape, or form. Women give birth. Women are to be the head of the house, to be helpmeets, a glorious, noble thing in the eyes of the Lord. But ye hath God said, Christy, and all you other feminazis. But see, like I said in the previous video, that stupid head Christy Burke, that's the symptom of Christianity. And I, I, I got to share this. Uh, I'm sure this individual didn't mean it the way that he did. But I, I gotta share this comment with you that I pinned in the previous video. Um, if my phone were oh, well, one second, I got I gotta share this with you because this is right. This is right. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, a while ago, you'll see older videos where I said things that I was and blah blah blah. Okay, I was ignorant. I didn't know better. But in the previous video, you'll see this, this uh, fighting corruption um, made a great comment, and I don't think he intended it the way that he intended it. Christianity, quote, I'm quoting you if you see this. This was a great comment. Christianity make you confused and maybe more fool. And I responded, amen, I agree with you. I am not a Christian. Check out that video in the description box. What is a saint? Okay? Amen. Amen. Like I said, whoever you are that left that, I'm not attacking you. I agree with that comment. That's a great comment. That's a great comment. Christianity, people, atheists, 
Christianity produced what? Christy Burke. Christianity produces a lot of you. Okay? Because of this lie in the garden, because of the yea hath God said, and the willful disobedience to what God said. See, in the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation in Scripture, it was all works. Okay? It was all works. They saw God. God said, don't do that. They did it. That's a work. Don't do that. That's a work. They didn't need faith when they saw God. Okay? You don't need faith when you can see something. Okay? All right? That's how that works. Okay? So. But this is the basis for everything. All the heresy, all the evil. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, people like Christy, you atheists, this is you. Man cannot rightly, truly judge what is good and what is evil. Apart from... The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and his perfect standard. Okay? We have it written down for us. All right? See, we saints, we have a standard, the authorized version, where we judge ourselves and others. You atheists, your standard is yourself. You are your own God. Isaiah chapter 14. Like I told you, saints, this is old news to you. This video is not for you, okay? Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15, and part of the title of this video, okay? Now, you uh, atheists out there think you're cute and you're reading an NIV or ESV? They're going to tell, excuse me, they're going to tell you that Jesus Christ has fallen from heaven. You need the right book. Isaiah 14, verses 12 on verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Lucifer. What does Lucifer mean? Son of the morning, not morning star. There's a big difference. And see, you got something that's not the authorized version? Does it say morning star there? It does, doesn't it? And then you read Revelation, the Lord refers to himself as the Bright and morning star. So, the Bibles that come from Rome, the enemy of God, okay, um, tell you that this is Jesus Christ. That's blasphemy. God forbid, no. This is Lucifer, Satan. He's got a lot of names. Okay? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? What does Lucifer mean? Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Now, in the video that we saw Wednesday, and if you watch any of Miss Christy Burke, I feel, I, 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 just like Mark the Messenger, I, I, it didn't feel right to me. I didn't, I, I, I. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Every single one of you atheists do that. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Seek to rule, set, open everybody's eyes by disobeying what God said. You have your father the devil. Let's continue. Okay. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Five. I will be like the Most High. It's interesting. Satan there says in his heart, five I wills. You look in scripture, five is a number associated with death. And Christy, the one video that we were going to look at, the five verses that, you know, did something to my family. She was never saved in the first place. She was never a saint. There are tons of ex-Christians out there. You atheists, right? A lot of you atheists. Well, I was a Christian. I'm sure you were. Okay? There are a lot of ex-Christians out there. Yeah. 
There ain't no such thing as an ex-saint. There ain't no such thing that doesn't exist. Okay? Because when you go to the Lord on His terms and He saves you, He seals you permanently. Once saved, always saved. Until the day of redemption. You know, the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. You guys know it erroneously as the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? It's the catching way of the body of Christ. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? All right? We're once saved, always saved. We can get messed up. We have the choice. All things are lawful for me. But not all things are expedient. We don't cover those verses in this video. But again, we can make the same choice as you do. Why? Because the Lord has given us liberty through Christ's charity. They are two different things. They are, okay? Charity is self-sacrifice, okay? But we have liberty. We can make the same choices that you guys do. You lost people. But we don't because the Lord is in us like, don't do that. Don't do that. Let's see. It's not at gunpoint. And incidentally, one of the things that apparently messed up, besides Satan himself, uh, messed up, I doubt Satan himself is whatever, uh, was Calvinism. 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 The main thing of Calvinism, by the way, is simply that elect and non-elect that people are going to heaven without their choice and people are going to hell without their choice. They do not believe in free will. But the Calvinist says what? We do believe in free will. Really? How so? Well, the elect, they have free will to do whatever, like you said. The non-elect have free will to do whatever they want to do. But salvifically, it's predetermined, right? So there's no free will. <laughs> verse 15 in Isaiah 14 yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit see you're your own God you're going to go to hell we make lousy gods if you haven't figured that out some of you atheist people have not Ezekiel 28 Ezekiel 28 is talking about Satan, okay? Son of the morning, all right? It's talking about Tyrus. Well, the one that was controlling Tyrus was Satan. So the Lord was speaking past Tyrus to the root of the problem, like he did with Peter. It's like, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. Oh, he says, thou art an effect. Instead of misquoting that, thank you, brother. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, one verse, verse uh, 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Okay? So the same thing is happening here in Ezekiel 28. But in Ezekiel 28, verses 15, on to verse 19. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Yes, Satan is a created being. Every, you know, you read verse 13 with all the jewels and precious stones as his covering. He was the son of the morning. And no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Okay, he's a counterfeit. All right? By the, verse 16, By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Doesn't sin look so attractive? Hmm? 
like in the Garden of Eden. Doesn't that one thing that you're told not to do, why does that always look so appealing to you, right? Hmm? Because someone says you can't have it, that makes you want it even more, right? Yeah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Now, Satan's ultimate end is going to be with all you devils, all you lost people, all you atheists in the lake of fire. Okay? That very one that deceived you, who you followed, is going to be there with you. Okay? <clears throat> All they, oh, wait, 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 verse 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring thee forth, bring forth, excuse me, a fire from the midst of thee. You guys are your own worst enemy. You're going to destroy your own selves by thinking you are your own God like your father the devil here, okay? It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Satan's ultimate end. The lake of fire. Just like you who deny the Lord. But yet elevate yourself. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. In the New Testament. Okay. Oh, incidentally, the New Testament begins with the death of the testator. The gospel accounts are in the collection of books uh, known as the New Testament. But doctrinally, the New Testament began with the death of the testator. We cover that right away within the first 30 minutes of the previous video. Okay. But John chapter 8, verses 43 on to verse 45. <laughs> Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, yea, hath God said, we already looked at it. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Yea, hath God said. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Okay? Now, in the description box, there will be a very detailed video where we go through and debunk Calvinism through Scripture. Okay? Calvinism teaches that you do not have a choice in salvation. Okay? Salvation is not at gunpoint. God is the one who saves you. But you are the one who needs to go to Him. He died for all. Yes, He did. But not everyone is going to go the way that He has prescribed to go to Him. A lot of people want to boot the door and go up some other way. Hence, you're a thief and a robber. Okay? God has given us free will. We have the freedom to choose, yea or nay. You atheists have chosen yourselves. You are your own God. We have chosen to go to the Lord, that he may forgive us by his grace through faith today in this dispensation. Okay? So, Genesis chapter 2. That is what we are going to be concentrating on. We are going to show you that man has free will to make the choice. Okay? Salvation differs in the dispensations. Okay? You read the account of the Garden of Eden. That ought to be clear to anyone. And even some atheists I have found, or who have found me, excuse me, and talked with me, who actually knew a little something about Scripture... They even had, a couple of them even had the sense, it's like, well, that, it wasn't uh, faith alone in the Garden of Eden. I, yeah, I know, you're right. Some atheists even get that. Muslims can even get that one right. Okay? All right? So, it's not 
Faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Okay? Link for that is in the previous video, which will be in this video. But Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 17. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There were two trees. Okay? Right away, hold on a minute here. Atheists will come to this and say, well, this is a contradiction. Because, okay, when you read Genesis chapter 1, right? Uh, you see um, man was created on the sixth day. Animals were created on the fifth day. Vegetation and stuff were created for that, right? And then you come to Genesis chapter 2, which is recounting, by the way, uh, the events of chapter 1. But they come to chapter 2 and it's like, okay, in this, the man was created first, then this, then... it's. This is accounting for the Garden of Eden. Not the entirety of creation. Okay? It's not a contradiction. Okay, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. From verse 8 onward, he's talking about what went on specifically in the garden of Eden. Okay? This is not a contradiction for, with the first chapter. Okay, Mr. Atheist? Okay, there's no contradiction. It's describing the events specifically from verse 8 on, describing the events specifically within the Garden of Eden. Okay? All right? All right. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? So you would read that and right away you ate this like that contradicts with chapter 1. Um, garden of Eden. This is talking about specifically the Garden of Eden. This account in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Okay? And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted. And became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it, which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedil, and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river, river is Hedekiel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Choose. But... Here's the command. And here's the work. This is a work. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He never said, you shouldn't touch it like we already examined. Okay? That's, that's a work. Don't do that. That's a work. Faith they didn't need faith because when you read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, which we're getting to. But now let's read in verse uh, 18 on to verse 20 now in Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air. Again, atheist, chill. Yes, animals were made before man in Genesis chapter 1. This is the account specifically within the Garden of Eden. Okay? That's why it is the way it is. 
He had already made these things, but he's just doing this now within the Garden of Eden. There are not two different creations. No, this is specifically within the Garden of Eden. Okay? Yeah, let's continue. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Whatsoever Adam called the every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. A help meet. A help meet. And then he creates woman of man. Of man came woman. And you feminazis, you don't like that because you want to rule over man. You won't have a man telling you what to do. Okay? But see, right away, right away, you have all this to eat from. Don't eat from that. Okay? And see, God lives outside of our time. God is not restricted to our time. God knows the future. God knew what was going to happen. Why did God allow it? Because God doesn't want a robot. God wants you to make the right choice. And he is the right choice. But yeah, hath God said, came along. And now, in Genesis chapter 3, as we read in the previous video, but though you people are not watching the whole thing, and I already expected that, but Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 on to verse 15. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And you read in chapter 2, they were naked and they were not ashamed, because there was no sin. They specifically did what God told them not to do. God told them not to do something, and they did it. See, God commanded them not to do that. that that's a work. That's a work. Okay? Don't believe these wicked free gracers. It's like, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Can you not read? But then again, free gracers don't rightly divide the word of truth, even though they say they are. Some of them say they are dispensational. Uh, anyway. And the eyes of them, verse 7 again, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Hold your place here if you're following along. Go to Hebrews 11. Okay? Hebrews 11. All right? We just want one verse. The very first verse in Hebrews 11. Okay? <laughs> by, faith, by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. You're on crack cocaine. Okay? Now, Gen uh, Genesis. Hebrews 11, verse 1. What is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Okay? Go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk unless there's a body there? The Father, which is the soul. The Father, the Word, Made flesh in Genesis chapter 1, God said, and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, and these three are one. Hey, atheist, guess what? You're made in the image of God. You are. You have a spirit. You have a soul. And you have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. How does a voice walk unless there is a body? 
They saw God in the Garden of Eden. They didn't need faith in the Garden of Eden. They saw God. Okay? They saw God. Any of you free gracers who like to say it uh, was by grace through faith in Genesis in the Garden of Eden, you're a liar. Or you just don't know. You're a liar. You're lying. They didn't need faith. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Come out. God knew where they were. God knew what was happening. But what's going on here? Let's, let's explain. Let the scripture explain. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I command thee? commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? What's happening here is God is giving Adam a chance to man up, as it were, to take responsibility. You know, you fathers out there, when you're going to discipline your son or your daughter, you know what they did, you go to them. Uh, how'd this happen? You knew how it happened. Did you do what I told you not to do? You know they did. To give them the chance to man up. It's like, yes, Father, I, I did what you told me not to do. It's like, I know you did. Now I'm going to give you a whooping because you did what I told you not to do. But it's right and good that you manned up. That's what God the Father is doing there with Adam. It's not that God does not know, okay? God knows everything, okay? Jesus Christ. Who is God the Father? The same yesterday, today, and forever. He is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. Okay? He is. You old fart. All right? He knew what was happening. You're not going to pull the wool over God's eyes. God as Father is getting, giving Adam the chance to man up. Okay? Now, what did Adam do? And he said, oh, and the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. It's their fault. It's not my fault. It's their fault that I'm this way. They're, they're the reason. If you hadn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. So ultimately, it's your fault. I'm not mine. I'm a victim. This is what is referred to as the Adamic nature. The old man. We don't like to take responsibility or accountability, do we? Come on. Even us saints, but see us saints, save people who got the Lord in us permanently, where are we going to go? What are we going to do? What are we going to say to the Lord who sees all things and we know he sees all and knows all? What are we going to say to him? Okay? This, that's exactly what Adam did. He blames God. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me, gavest to be with me. So, okay, she did, but you, you, you gave me her. And she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Oh, how many of these half-hearted things have you seen? Have you atheists with, with other people, even yourself? Okay? To justify yourself? Because of sin? How many times have you encountered this? That's what this is. You see that in all of mankind. Okay? All right? You even see it in some saints who want to justify themselves. The Lord chastens his saints, yes, but this is a trait of mankind. Okay? 
Adam blew it. The Lord gave Adam a chance there. Adam had a choice. This is why this thing about no free will, that God doesn't give people free will, is stupid. Okay? Adam had a choice right there. Okay? He did. He could have been like, Lord, this is my fault. I should have been with my wife. When she came to me, I should have slapped it out of her hand. I was like, what are you doing? Okay? I, I, this is my fault. Have mercy on me. I, I did, we did what you said not to do. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I personally think that Adam was, had a little, was deceived. Eve was deceived first. Yes, she was. Okay. I think Adam had a lapse in judgment because there are those out there who say, well, he, uh, he went to die for his wife. That's why he did that. His response there kind of contradicts that thought. Okay, we've talked about that before. But regardless of whatever you think about why Adam did what he did, regardless of, regardless of, God gave him the chance. Adam had a choice. He could have either manned up and taken responsibility as the man, or he could have blamed God and his wife and then take kind of a little responsibility, which he did. Okay? And the Lord God, and this here is the infamous, infamous, okay? And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The devil made me do it. And her, Miss Burke, in the previous video, which uh, we address, her feminist agenda, implying that, well, Jesus, he, he sent out women to go preach of him, which Jesus never did. She lied to you, okay? See, her agenda is to elevate women above man, okay? Okay, at least Christy isn't purporting to be saved. She never was saved in the first place, but at least she's not. But see, the agenda is placing woman above all, okay? That's what her agenda is, okay? All right. And what are we reading to? Verse 15. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And remember how we just read in Matthew 16 about how Satan savors the things that be of man and not of God? And he's right here, cursed to eat dust all his life. Um, verse 19, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Satan is a fan of man, and he is going after mankind. Okay? Verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The very first prophecy of Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. That's the very first prophecy of Jesus Christ right there. Okay? But we see here, this, this ought to be painfully obvious they had a choice they were not robots there was nothing forced upon them they had free will okay they had free will exodus chapter 3 exodus chapter 3 exodus chapter 3 Exodus chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 20. The big mama to Miss Christy Burke, uh, the one the, that she named right away, which we cover in the previous video. Um, we are, we're not going to cover this as in-depth as we can because we already do that in the Calvinist video. But she said that the one that really messed her up because of Calvinism, watch out for Calvinists. 
is Romans 9, 16, verse, verses 16 on to verse 24, which we're going to address. But we have to go through this process to show you choice, free will. Because Calvinist comes to Romans 9 and says, salvation is already predetermined. You're, you're either elect or non-elect. But I don't want to be a non-elect. I, 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 I want to turn to the Lord. I can't say, it doesn't matter, you're not elect. And what happens? What happens? They run into a, a stupid Calvinist like that. Well, they see these cross-dressing Calvinists uh, living like a devil. Well, I'm elect. I can do that. And then someone who is told by a Calvinist, well, you're, you're just not elect. And, the, and that person be like, I can't save myself. I, I believe what's written here. What are you talking about? Sorry, you're not elect. I don't want nothing to do with your God. Your God is cruel, not fair. How, what? In Ezekiel, our Lord says, O Israel, are not my ways equal and your ways unequal? How can God be a just God? If he condemns people to hell without ever giving them the chance to make a choice. See, that's why children who are born before the age of accountability. Yes, the age of accountability is not in scripture. Okay, you're right. All right. But a 10 year old can't understand the gravity of what it means that they are a sinner in the sight of God, that they have sinned against God. A 10 year old can't understand that. It's when they can comprehend, oh, I'm, God says I'm a sinner because that's when they become aware, then they are aware of their guilt. Hence the age of accountability. That differs. There's no set age. There is no set age. It depends on the Lord and on the person's spirit's own body. Okay? That depends. All right? But see, children who die before that time, before they can even know what is right and wrong, okay? If they die at, like aborted children, they're in heaven, okay? A child, before they uh, learn tricks, as it were, they die, they're going to go to heaven. I have um, kin who are young, teenagers, who are accountable now. They've heard it. They are aware. God is fair. Mankind is not fair. And when you atheists encounter a Calvinist with the elect and non-elect, and you hear that, well, you're just non-elect. Sorry, can't help you. I don't want to be like this. I, I, I believe it. Sorry, you're not elect. What do you do? Huh? It's like, it's like when you atheists hear the Christian, God, God loves you unconditionally. God loves me unconditionally, but yet he's going to send me to hell to burn forever. God loves me unconditionally, but yet I'm not elect. Guy, you, guy who left that comment in the previous video. Yes. Christianity leads to confusion and yes, makes you a fool. A fool says in his heart, there is no God. That was a great comment, by the way. I know you meant it to offend, but you did, okay? Because you spoke the truth, okay? That's one of the dangers of, Catholic, of Catholicism, yeah, of course, but of Calvinism, okay? That's one of the big dangers. But see, Paul in Romans 9 makes a reference onto Pharaoh. And atheists, well, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Yes, he did. You're right. But Pharaoh, before that, had already made his choice. And Pharaoh, in his own heart, believed he was a god. Remember, okay, and you atheists probably know more about the Egyptians than I do. Okay, I know what the scriptures say about Egypt. That's all I need to know. You probably know a lot more about their Egyptian pagan gods and stuff like that, okay? The pharaohs were seen as what? Gods. The represented, uh, representative of Ra or whatever, 
Okay? The pharaohs were seen as God. Pharaoh, in Exodus, thought he was God. Exodus chapter 3, verses 19 on verse 20. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. Why is that? Because his heart was already hardened before the Lord just continued to lead him along. See, you got to be careful what you ask for, people, because the Lord will give it to you. You don't want to believe the truth? We're going to look at these verses. The Lord's like, fine. You don't want to believe me? Here, you have all the lives, all the lies you want, and believe all the stupidity you want. This is your best life now, see? God will give you that. He's very generous like that. You don't want the truth? He's going to stuff down your throat all the quail you can eat, all the nonsense you can eat. Okay? Got to be careful what you want. And I will stretch out... Uh, and I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Exodus chapter 4, verses 21 under verse 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, who himself thought he, thought he was a god which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. See, Pharaoh, in that position of power, he already thought he was a god. He already thought very highly of himself. His heart was already hardened. God here just continued to let him be that way. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to lead you along in your deception. Okay? See, Pharaoh people already had made a choice to be against God. We're going to prove that to you. Okay, let's keep reading. And Pharaoh shall say unto, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. The continuation of God, as it were, okay, for the pharaohs. All right. Now let's go to Exodus chapter five. Exodus chapter five, verses one and two. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, "Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness." Look at Pharaoh's reaction. Excuse me, Pharaoh's reaction. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. See, and after this we see that the Lord start, you know, hardens Pharaoh's heart. But see, Pharaoh's heart was already hardened because of choice. He chose to believe that he was God. His own God, the God of Egypt. Yes, Egypt believed in many gods, but come on, you atheists can back that one up at least. That the they saw Pharaoh as oh, I think it was what? The representative of Ra or something like that. They saw Pharaoh as a god too. He also thought of himself as God. Okay? Pharaoh already made the choice. And let's read verses six on verse nine. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Verse 9. Let their work, let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Oh boy. Vain words, useless, empty words. The word of the Lord. Okay? Now with what we just looked at at Genesis, can can you see? 
the yea hath God said, ye shall be as gods, right there in Pharaoh. He believed he was his own God, and he called what the Lord said through Moses and Aaron vain words. Yea hath God said, right there. He made his choice. He made his choice already, people. Okay? Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Okay? You got to be careful what you want. You got to be careful what you ask for. Careful what you wish for. You might get it. Okay? If you want truth, the Lord is there to give you truth. He's there. If you want the truth, Jesus Christ, He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you truly want to know the Lord, He'll draw you along. So come on. Come on. Come on. He will. Like Christy Burke, who does not want to know the truth. Isaiah 66. This is 1 on verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath man, mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and, that, and trembleth at my word. Did Pharaoh? No, because he had already made his choice. He that killeth an ox is as, he, as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighted in their abominations. You, you guys, you love to do evil. You delight in abomination. You have chosen, not forced to make a decision, like Calvinists teach, and like Miss Burke doesn't believe in free will or something like that. Uh, chosen. You have a choice. You have free will, people. Calvinist, okay? Salvation is not a force. Never has been, never will be. But see, the Calvinist, very crafty, said, we do believe in free will. The elect have free will to do as they please. The non-elect, no, 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 no. No. Salvation is not by force. Salvation is not predetermined upon this guy or that guy. That's heresy, that is vile, rank, wicked heresy, and besides, as some of you atheists have even encountered Calvinists, ain't they a little on the cocky side about, well, I'm elect. Sorry, you don't like that, I'm elect. You're not, sorry. I hope things go okay for you, but you're not elect. See how stupid that is? And see how Satan through these Christian things, have is trying to make the faith that was once delivered onto the saints look bad. And the one thing Christie said that was true, yes, it was referred to as the way. Uh, long before the world called it Christianity. Okay? The world called it Christianity. Okay? I also will choose their delusions. You choose to reject the Lord. God's like, okay, here. You don't want to believe me? Here, you can go to Rome, the mother of all harlots. You can go to atheism. Uh, you can go to Hinduism. You can go to Buddhism. You can go to uh, Calvinism. You can go to the Charismatics. You can become a King James Bible even Christian and act like a, ca a Catholic. Uh, I mean, here, here's your here. You don't want truth? There's a smorgasbord for you to choose from. Just don't have a choice. Because what does the Lord say? Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. But broad is the way. It leadeth on to death, and many go 
that way. Okay? I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. Oh, but they were elected and not elect. Let me, let's finish the verse. Let's finish the verse. I also will choose their delusions. I will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. People, listen to me. Calvinists are liars. There are some Calvinists that are sincere, who try to walk godly, but their premise is elect and non-elect. That's their big thing. Some will argue it's predestination. Elect and non-elect. I'm elect and you're not. And the atheist, who might have some um, serious inquiries, encounters a Calvinist, well, you're just not elect. Of course, of course the non-believing person, they encounter a Calvinist like that, of course they're going to get their buttocks chafed. Of course, because they're telling them uh, something that is not of God. Okay? Okay, and I have. Let me just show you, okay? Let me just show you. I have John Calvin's, the Institutes of the Christian. This is his big mama, okay? Uh, I have not read all of this. I, I don't want to. But I have read about what he says about elect and non-elect predestination. It's heresy. It's heresy. See, John Calvin was a devil. John Calvin was never saved. You cannot be saved and preach that kind of nonsense. I don't believe it. I mean, you can get messed up, but God, if he were saved, would uh, God, if John Calvin were actually saved, he would have repented of this sooner or later, but he never did. And we have John MacArthur and all these idiot Calvinists out there. Okay? All right, but yes, I have read what Mr. Calvin uh, taught about the elect and non-elect. Now, granted, granted, we got to acknowledge this. Okay, heresy gets worse with time. Okay? Catholics, Catholicism, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, says that she never changes. That's not true. She gets worse. A lot of the Calvinism that you are hearing today is actually does deviate from what Calvin himself taught, even though they all hold to the same principle of elect and non-elect. But Calvin today, if he were to see a lot of the runoff Calvinists, he probably would be shocked. Okay? Probably would. Not defending the man, I don't think John Calvin was ever saved. Do not think he was ever saved. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay? But, again, you have free will. You have free will. Second Thessalonians, which is doctrine written for us today. You don't watch me anymore anyway, I, I don't think. Besides, I blocked you. I, I ain't got time for that. You, made, you showed your colors to me. And... Um, I'm being respectful by not mentioning you, but there are several who have figured out who I'm talking about. But I'm leaving that alone. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 on verse 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Christy Burke was never saved. She never received the love of the truth. Okay? She was offended by what God says is the place of a woman of God. That was her offense. Hence, you see it in her agenda to elevate woman as the superior creature. Okay? All right? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
So see, Pharaoh already had made a choice. Okay? And because he had made that choice, and we just saw in two different dispensations, under the law and for today, where if you choose contrary to the Lord, the Lord will give you what you want. Careful what you wish. You might just get it. And you atheists, you are your own gods. Hence, the Lord has given you all that. You, it's like, here, go ahead. You want to believe all that? Go right ahead. Want to believe the earth is millions and billions in a galaxy far, far away. Nothing exploded and from nothing came snot out of the water. And Ex Go back to Exodus now. Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 on verse 21. Like I said, we, we did cover some of these verses yesterday, but the watch time of the previous video, you atheists, and you atheists probably won't even make it this far. But in case you do, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed, and in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to shew in thee my power, and that my name might, may be declared throughout all the earth. And we're going to see this in Romans 9. He's making an example out of Pharaoh, who before the Lord started hardening his heart, carrying him along so, he had already made the choice to be against God. <coughs> okay? He had already made a choice. He had already said in his heart that he was his own God. Okay? Hence, the Lord leading them along, and hence, we're reading about it in Scripture, hence, the Lord made an example out of Pharaoh. Okay? Pharaoh, prince over the children of pride, which is in the previous video. Okay? As yet... Exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go? And what are we reading to? Verse 21. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof even until now. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them. I shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord, and we already saw Pharaoh called the word of the Lord, the spoken word, this right here, the word of the Lord, he called them vain words. Okay? He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. Kind of like Pharaoh. Okay? Alright? Let's go to Romans 9 now. Okay? Let's go to Romans 9. Calvinists come to this to try to tell you to prove elect and not elect. That is not true. Elect and not elect. You see elect mentioned in the New Testament. And before the death, burial, and resurrection, when you see the Lord talk about it, to deceive even the elect. He's talking about the Jews. In the Pauline epistles, doctrine for this dispensation today, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Watch the previous video, okay? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Elect, see, God is a God who chooses, okay? God is a God who chooses. He chooses the way of salvation, but he doesn't choose who is going to be saved 
in his power, he gives people that freedom, that liberty to choose, okay? He chooses the way of salvation in the dispensation, okay? First dispensation, okay? First dispensation, it was works. The second dispensation, the patriarchal period, it was similar to this dispensation, but not exact. No eternal security. And the faith that they had in the patriarchal period was in what God was going to do. Okay? Going to do. He was going to lead Abraham over here. Okay? He was going to bring on the flood, and he did. Okay? He did. The faith in the patriarchal period was what God was going to do. Okay? And eternal security was not there in this period as it is today. In that period of the patriarchal period. Okay? The law. Self-explanatory. Faith and works. This dispensation. By grace, favor, through faith. Time of Jacob's trouble. Reverting back to faith and works. The kingdom of heaven. Works. The seventh and final dispensation. Eternity, no sin, nothing, okay? So, all right, God chooses. God chose the law, under the law. God chose the way of the cross. <coughs> Today, if you make the right choices, if you go the way he has prescribed, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name and he'll save you, okay? You have gone the elected way of the cross. Hence, when Paul talks about the elect, which is defined by context, by the way, that's what that's referring to. Today, yes, we are the elect. The elected way of the cross. Not the elect as Calvinists teach you. Okay? But, Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Verses 11 to start. We're going to be reading verses 11 on to verse 24. Okay, in Romans chapter 9. But we're going to start first with Romans 11, or Romans 9, verses 11 on to verse 13. Now here's another one that the, uh, the uh, Calvinists will come to. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. Talking about uh, Jacob and Esau. That the purpose of God according to election might stand. Not of works, but of him that calleth. Now, election. Paul is talking about Esau, Jacob and Esau. In that time in Genesis, God was establishing the Hebraic line. The Hebraic people. Okay? God called Abraham out of Shem. Not Ham. Not Japheth. Shem. He took Abraham out of Shem, the patriarchal period, the period of the fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Esau, who was the firstborn. So he was establishing the Hebraic line, and Jesus Christ is a Hebrew. Is it not evident that our Lord sprang of Judah? Okay? So God was establishing the Hebraic line, taking Abraham out from his kindred, Shem, to establish the Hebraic line, okay? Hamites are not Hebrews. Japhethites are not Hebrews. Chinese, Japanese are not Hebrews, okay? Because Chinese, uh, Japanese, those are Asiatics, Shem. The Indians, the indigenous Indians here in America that us Japhethians came over and annihilated, okay? <laughs> All right? Also of Shem, all right? But they're not Hebrews. The Hebrews were called out of Shem, okay? God chose that to establish the line where he himself would come through, okay? All right? All right? Okay? In that, Abraham had a choice. He didn't have to go as he did. Abraham made choices. He made the disastrous choice to go on to uh, Hagar and bring about what would eventually become the Ishmaelites, the Muslims, the Arabs. Okay? See, free will is throughout Scripture. 
despite what the Calvinist teaches you. Well, let's get back to this, because I, I, this might be burning on you, okay? For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth him. We just described, see, context about elect, okay? Paul right there is referring to, prove it to you, absolutely, okay? It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, Esau shall serve Jacob. In context here, he is making a reference on to the Hebraic people. That does not mean, you wicked devil, easy believism, free grace or idiots. This does not mean that he, Romans 9, 10, and 11, is doctrine written for the Jews. That's heresy. To see, that's something that they do to try to justify just believe. Okay? Never mind that. But, as it is written... Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Elect and non-elect. God knew what Esau was going to do. Yes, he did. But see, God wouldn't be a fair God unless he gave them the chance to choose, right? Right? And Calvinist comes along with elect and non-elect and says, no, you don't have the, the ability to choose. But, 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 no buts about it. You, hey, you're like an elect. Well, put me on you and your God. And you know what, atheist, when you say that to a Calvinist, I agree. <coughs> to the God of, of uh, Calvinism, because it is not the God of the Scriptures. It is not. It is not. What is this talking about? Malachi. Malachi chapter 1. Okay, you atheist, if you've made it this far, get... Okay, even if you got a if you got a laptop, get, even if you gotta get your health phone. Okay, follow along with this. This this is kind of important for you. Okay? This is important for you. You need to understand this. Malachi ch chapter one, verses one on verse three. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you. Past tense. Set the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, said the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Now, you can read about the entirety of Esau and Jacob, which we are going to do in Genesis chapter 25. Okay? Esau, by the way, Esau wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay? There are some saints out there who say that uh, Esau was just this bitter, evil... No. I think Esau was a little stupid. I do. I do. I think Esau was not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Genesis chapter 25, verses 29 on to verse 34. Esau had a choice. Esau had a choice. God knew what he was going to do. But see, God wouldn't be fair and just unless he gave them the chance to choose, even though he knows what they're going to do. Okay? Now see, that don't make sense to you and I, right? Because you and I as mankind, we know what they're going to do. They're not going to do the right thing, so why would we give them any leeway at all, right? That's what you and I think as mankind. But what does the Lord say? His ways, praise you, Lord. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And God, praise you, Lord, that you don't think like we do. God forbid if he was like, because if God had the mentality that we do, I wouldn't want to serve him. And neither would you. Genesis 25, verses 30, uh, 29 and verse 34. Okay? And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. For I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Red. 
He came out red like a hairy garment, red, red pottage, lentils, okay? Uh, red, that's Edom, okay? So Esau came from the field, and he was faint. I am so hungry. I'm about to die. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright, the right of the firstborn, which by right was entitled unto Esau. Now, you stood to inherit all these things, to be part of the line of the Hebrew, you know. Be, and Jacob said, sell me your birthright. He said, I can't, I ain't giving you that. Just give me the, give me the thing of soup. I'm not getting, well, fine, then I'll just, uh, but then again, you know, Esau was all about flesh. You know, he's like, let's keep reading, okay? And Esau said, behold, I can just see him being a little melodramatic too. Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? To be of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Esau? No. God knew that he was going to do this. Yes, he did. But see, Esau, he gave Esau the chance to do otherwise. Right here, we're looking at it. He had a choice. Jacob's like, hey, I'll give you soup. Give me your birthright. Esau could have done, should have done, what, what, what? for a bowl of soup? Dude, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty faint. I need something, but I ain't doing that. You, 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 you on crack. I'm out of here, man. Did he do that? No. I'm at the point to die. I'm sure he wasn't about to die. You know how melodramatic. I'm starving. I saw, unfortunately, a TikTok with this young girl screaming at the top of her lungs. I have worked 10 hours and I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day and she's screaming. I'm like, whoa, whoa. You know, Esau, it's like, I'm going to die. You probably ate eight hours ago. I'm about to die. And, Jay, and Esau is like, what does this birthright do me? Look at what happened with Jacob. Hmm? He despised his birthright. He counted the heritage of the Lord as nothing, like new atheists do. Okay? Uh, black Hebrew Israelites like to call white people Esau. Okay? That, that's stupid that they do that. But you atheists are more in line with Esau than anything. Okay? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob for a bowl of soup. So Esau saw the things as rightfully belonging to him as firstborn, which would have been inherited unto him in the whole thing of the line of the Hebraic people. God knew what he was going to do, but God gave him a choice here. Okay? Look at his reasoning. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do me? This birthright. You talk about stupid things. Esau was not the... Esau was stupid. Esau, and I would say that to Esau's face, even though he'd probably annihilate me in a heartbeat. I would. I'd say, dude, you're an idiot. He was. He was. He lightly esteemed the things of God. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Look this out. Check this out. Esau asked for a bowl of soup. Okay? And verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Okay? He just asked for a bowl of soup. Check this out. This is very interesting. Your eyes shall be open. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he gave it 
and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Look at that verse. Esau just asked for soup. Jacob, after he got what he wanted, supplanter, gave him not only soup, but bread, and he also gave him something to drink. You have to be careful what you wish for, people. Hence, Esau despised his birthright. Hence, God hated Esau. Does not say that he hated his sin. Said that he hated Esau. Okay? All right. And we covered this yesterday. Like I said, the watch time of the previous video, uh, y'all ain't watching. And that's fine. I understand that. I get that. It's there to put it in pieces. That is a lot long video like this one will be. I understand. I understand. But uh, if you want to know, okay, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 on to verse 17. We covered this yesterday. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And what do we read on verse 17? Looking diligently, lest any man fall, um, fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. That's why God hated Esau. Not because it was a predetermined thing. God knew what he was going to do. But God still allowed that whole thing to, to transpire. Esau had a choice. The choice was when Jacob's like, sell me your birthright. The choice was there for Esau. Okay, sell him, well, what good is this birthright? Or, uh, you want me to, what's, what, be, no, no way! You, uh-uh! He had a choice. He had a choice. Okay? For you know how that afterward, when he had already made his choice, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, and we're going to touch on this, once you take that mark of the beast, your friend, uh, ipso facto, you're going to hell. Okay? What was Esau's problem? Much like you atheists who like that uh, stupid head Christy Burke, and again... I, I hope, and apparently it is, uh, I hope her life goes great for her. I really do. I hope she has the best that her father offers her. I hope everything goes great. I really do. Because she's going to hell. I have no joy in saying that. But when you make your choice, Romans 16, verse 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. If they don't serve our Lord Jesus Christ, then that would mean that they're not saved. Yeah. Okay? But their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches... Deceive the hearts of the simple. Look at that. But their own belly. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 17 on verse 19. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 17 on to verse 19. Okay? Brethren, be followers together of me and walk and mark them which walk so as ye have us for in, in sample. I love that word. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you weeping that they are enemies
things of the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ is what? Is death. Okay? The cross is death. Death to self. That's why nobody likes it. Okay? All right? <clears throat> For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly and have you ever had haggis before never mind it's really good our belly is flesh so when someone's God is their belly that's flesh they're talking about is their God Satan savoreth not the things that be of man, or not the things that be of God, excuse me, but the things that be of man. And Satan was cursed to go on the earth and eat dust, and more dust, you get it? Okay? Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Like a lot of these Calvinists, who boast in their doing sin, say, well, I'm elect. I can do whatever I want because I'm elect. <laughs> and you atheists, you look at that, it's like, that's Christianity. I want nothing to do. And you know what, atheist? You're right. Amen, you're right. I give you atheists that credit. I do. Yeah. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. And you're right. You're right to detest Christianity. You are right. You are right. You are. Because what you encounter, easy believism, Calvinism, easy believism, free gracism, whatever and Calvinism and you come across that stuff and you're like wow you're Christians I want nothing to do with you can't say that I blame you I, I, I can't blame you guys for that I can't see I'm not a Christian and there are many of us who are not a saved person even if they want to cling to that term they're not Christians. They're saints. And again, gotta, that'll be in the description box again. You just think about a saint, okay? What a saint is, scripturally, not according to Rome. See, you're going off to what Rome tells you, okay? Unbeknownst. All right? All right? But see, people who God is their belly, whose flesh, who themselves are God, their own God, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 and verse 25. Okay? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You atheists are without excuse. Okay? You are made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Okay? Okay? I'm writing these down for links. Okay? All right? Let's continue. <clears throat> because that when they knew God, like Christy, she doesn't even know who God, she doesn't even have a head knowledge of God, but whatever, okay? Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Why? Elect and not elect? No. They're without excuse, and they choose to reject God. Hence, as we had already looked at, you make the choice to be against God, or He's going to give you what you want. 
Everything contrary to him. He's like, fine, go ahead. Go ahead. So you don't belong to him. He's like, hey, say, go, you go, go, do whatever you're gonna do. <laughs> okay, go right ahead. Okay. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You know, I've told this to you all here quite a few times. Just uh, Proverbs uh, 14, uh, Psalm 14, excuse me. Psalm 14 about what a fool is, okay? What a fool is, Psalm 14. Or Psalm 53, whether we're closer to 53, okay? Psalm 53, it says virtually the same thing in Psalm 14. Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. A fool is someone who says in their heart, there is no God. Yes? You do believe in a God, but yet you say in your heart, there is no God. But you yourself are your own God. <laughs> Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Let's continue. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Man mentioned first, worshiping yourselves as your own gods. Okay? And to birds, that stupid satanic little uh, bird of the satanic Roman Catholic, Egyptian Babylonian pff, trinity that goes and poops on people. Okay? And four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Satan is a creature. You are a creature. And when you are your own God, you are of your father the devil. We already covered that. Okay? All right? Now, let's go back to Romans chapter 9. Okay? Remember, free will is throughout Scripture. The Calvinist comes to this in Romans chapter 9 to try to tell you that there is no free will. That is not true. Okay? Esau had a choice. They, they were, you know, Paul was just talking about Esau there. Okay? You have a choice. Salvation is not held at gunpoint by God or not to be saved by the devil. You have to make the right choice. Let's continue. Okay? Let's read verses 14 on to verse 24 in Romans chapter 9. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. No. No. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That's a definition of grace, okay? So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheweth mercy. He's talking about grace. He's not talking about elect and non-elect, okay? And what is being quoted here is Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, okay? Again, we, we did cover these in the previous video, but like I said, people, you know, the watch time is not there. I expected that and I, I, I anticipated that, but it's there. If you want to watch it, go ahead. If not, then shut up. You know, like I've said before, there are some of my enemies out there who will at least watch all of the video. I have more respect for them than some of you who just drop a comment. It's like, you know, with the Mark the Messenger uh, video. Almost every other comment was, don't judge. It's like, you people, we cover that, okay? There were links in the description box about, don't judge. Someone, a Christian, comes to you and says, don't judge. Uh, they're always, every single time, looking to justify themselves in sin. And it got to the point, it's like, okay, you'll see. I turned the comments off that. It's like, okay, you guys are going to just say, don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. You don't even know what you're talking about. And about that, in this video too, uh, judge not, okay? That we cover uh, quite a few topics in that video, but the judge not thing, okay, we cover it as well. All right? All right? Just not even, not even watching the video. But that's okay. That's okay. 
See, devils like Mark the Messenger, devils like Christy Burke, okay, they know the attention span of most people. Okay, Mark the Messenger rarely goes over 15 minutes. Uh, little Miss Burke, she goes 22 minutes. Sometimes she will go 45. Uh, I, I started to watch the one 45-minute one, and it's like, I just couldn't handle that. <laughs> Get out of there, okay? All right? But in Exodus chapter 33, okay, verses 18 and 19, okay? And he said, Moses, to the Lord, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. Okay? God's mercy and grace is there to be found in the cross. You have to make the decision to go the way that he has prescribed. Okay? You have the choice to make. God, unlike what Calvinism tells you, is not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to be saved. Neither is Satan pointing a gun at your head, forcing you not to be saved. You have to make the right decision. Okay? All right? If God, if God were as the Calvinists tell you, he would be a cruel God who plick, plucks the wings off of flies. Okay? He would be cruel. Okay? He would. He's not. He's right. He's just. Look, atheist, it doesn't matter if you want to believe this or not. He made you. He gave you life. Your belief on that is irrelevant. Because when you stand before him, what are you going to say? I'm sure you think you have a whole list. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's continue. In Romans chapter 9. Okay? Guys out there my window. Okay? <clears throat> Romans chapter 9, picking up at verse 17. Now we already touched on Pharaoh. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Pharaoh already had decided in his heart that he was against God. He already made a choice. See, Paul here with Esau and Jacob, Jacob and Esau, and here with Pharaoh, they all, we looked at it. They had the choice before them, just like Adam had the choice before him. You have the choice. Okay, you don't save yourself. No, God's the one who saves you. But he's not, come on, you're, I'm saving you whether you want it or not. Go away. You're lost whether you want it or not. No! No. We already looked at Pharaoh. We looked at Esau. They had the choice before them, and they chose poorly. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> Verse 17 again. For, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. Hardeneth. Esau had the choice. Pharaoh had a choice. You have a choice. So, what this is talking about you want God's mercy? You go the way he prescribed, the cross. You want his wrath? Say, I'll be, I'll be my own God. He hardens you because you've already made your choice. This is written in the context of you having choice. Okay? All right? Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Now see, you put Calvinism into this, okay? All right? You made me not elect? What? what? No. No. Okay? Think about this. Think about this. 
wouldn't it be nice if sometimes God would make the choice for us? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Why did you give me the choice? Think about that. Okay? Think about that. Calvinism says you have no choice in your salvation. It's predetermined. That's a lie. We've been proving that to you. Watch the Calvinist video. Okay? But see, some of you would be like, well, why didn't he choose for me? Hmm? Who, who resisted his will? His will f was there for you to make the right choice. To make the right choice. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? Nay, but no man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall a thing form say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Made me thus how? With the ability to choose. Some will come to this and like, Well, why have you made me gay? That, that's, that's blackness. You made that choice. I was born with the predisposition. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. That's a lie. See, to say that God made you gay means that God made a mistake in creating. Danger. For you to say God made me a woman in a man's body, you're showing again contempt for what God has made, charging God with the error. For you to say, well, if you knew all this, why didn't you do it for me? Then you would be a robot, wouldn't you? And God has given us free will. Comprende? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Okay? By example, what if God, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, we looked at Pharaoh, okay, using the example of Pharaoh, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. How are they fitted? They made their choice. They fit themselves to that equation. They have fitted themselves unto destruction. The example of Pharaoh. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Jacob, a liar, a thief, a cheat, who wrestled with God personally. And after that, he was a different person. Israel. Okay? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews also only, but also of the Gentiles. Prepared unto glory. He had a plan for the Hebraic people. And what was that plan? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Dear people, Romans 9 does not support Calvinism at all. Actually, when you deconstruct it, excuse me, that's a bad term. When you examine it, it's actually pro, you know, giving you that you have choice. You have choice. You have the choice to make. Okay? You have free will. God does not determine you from birth to go to heaven or hell. Okay? You make the choice. You're the one who is putting yourself there. God's going to put you there because you rejected him, but it was because you chose poorly. Okay? Now, Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1, okay? Ephesians chapter 1. 
verses 3 on to verse 14, and we get in detail in this within the Calvinism video, but we have to touch it here. Blessed be the God, verses 3 on to verse 14, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Remember that we read in Genesis chapter 3? You remember that? Hmm? Refresher? Okay. Genesis chapter 3, the very first prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. The woman there in reference is a reference on to what would be Israel, okay? And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1, okay? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us Onto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. When you go the elected way of the cross, your way is fixed. And he seals you, he saves you, you are predestined to go to heaven. That's what that means. Your way is fixed. You're once saved, always saved. Okay, that's what that means. All right? Having, uh, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved the beloved Israel he has grafted us into the tree of the Jew us Gentiles we are not Jews okay Jews are Jews Hebrews okay all right but we are grafted in. We are accepted into the beloved. Okay, that's what that means. Okay? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Genesis 20, uh, 22, verse 8. Okay? that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, our destination is fixed when we go the uh, called way of the cross, okay? All right, according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. That predestination that he's talking about. In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed. Sealed. With that Holy Spirit of promise. The Lord himself. First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Or 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. The Lord is that spirit. Okay? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So, we are predestinated to go to heaven because the Lord has sealed us with himself. He cannot deny himself. We're once saved, always saved. Calvinism? Nonsense. Check the link in the description box. Okay? We go over this thoroughly. Okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11, on to verse 22. Wherefore remember that ye be... Now this is addressing saved people, of course. All of this is. Okay? Addressing to the body of Christ. But you need to hear this, atheist. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past, in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now this dispensation 
But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the death, burial, and resurrection, the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Of twain, Jews and Gentile. Okay? And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you that to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one capital S spirit unto the Father. Hey you twit who mentioned about the capital S spirit. Okay? That was for uh, distinction why that was added? Because remember, as you probably would argue, well, the, all the originals were all capitals, right? Yeah, the originals that no one has. Yeah, shut up. You're the one who doesn't know what you're talking about. Okay? <clears throat> anyway. Now therefore ye are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the capital S, the Lord himself, Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Like I said, the Calvinism video will be for you in the description box for you to go over. Okay? Now let's go over some more. Let's go backtracking a little bit. Uh, about um, free will. Okay? Let's go. Okay? We are, this is going to be driven home to you. Uh, if you don't want to watch this video and leave your stupid comments, that's your problem. Probably we'll delete it. But uh, uh, watch the video. Watch the video. If my enemies can watch and will watch these videos in their entirety, why can't you? Those who hate me who would kill me with a baseball bat in a drunken stupor and run over me with a car, they will watch the entirety of this video. Why won't you, atheist? And those guys hate me. Why won't you? You're so smart, huh? Proverbs 16, verses 1 and verse 9. The preparations of the heart and man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord, all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Aren't they, right? But the Lord weigheth the lowercase s spirits. See, everything looks good to us. But are you going to the Lord? Lord, is this right? No! Oh, what should I do? Let me tell you, okay? Choice. Not coercion. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, atheist. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. That's also a good warning for us saints when we decide to act foolish and do things that we know we shouldn't. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Beg your pardon, I heard a noise that I had to go investigate. Continuing in Proverbs 16. <clears throat> by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Directeth, not by force. Okay? Not by force. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verses 15 on verse 20. <clears throat> Seek
See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Free will. That both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Now granted, this is another dispensation. Yes, yes, but the point is, free will is throughout Scripture. Uh, Joshua chapter 24, verses 14, on verse 21. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, atheist, whether the gods which, were, which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. And most of you have chosen yourself. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did the, those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein he went. We went, excuse me, and among all the people through whom we passed, and the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the Lord, unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord. What? Keep reading. Look at the semicolon there. Right? Or colon, whatever that is. For he, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. God made you. He has every right to get angry at you when you give to Satan what is rightfully due unto him as father. Okay? That's simply put. Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Verse 20. If, conditional clause, Ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Now this is showing, another, is showing a dispensational difference. This was under the law. Faith and works. Eternal security. Once saved, always saved was not there in this dispensation. Okay? If they disobeyed, that's what 19 is talking about. 19 is defined by verse 20. Okay? you got to keep reading. you got to remember context. Okay? All right? Now, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Still under the law. Canonically New Testament. Doctrinally still under the law. Matthew 16. Verses 24 on to verse 28. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If, conditional clause, not elect and non-elect like Calvin says, that you have no choice, you have free will. Okay? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, 
And then he shall reward every man according to his works, making reference unto the second coming there. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man come in his kingdom. Okay? Now, uh, that verse, some have gone to say that there are immortal people walking around today. Nonsense. This is talking about till they see the Son of Man come into his kingdom. You know the triumphal, triumph, uh, the triumphal em entry? Tongue tied there. Where he entered into Jerusalem riding on an ass and they were saying Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna to in the highest. The triumphal entry. That's what he's talking about. The Son of Man came into his kingdom. Okay? Not talking about, you know, that's what that's talking about. He will officially come in his kingdom at his second coming, but he arrived in the kingdom of heaven, you know, Jerusalem, which will be the kingdom of heaven. He arrived there riding on an ass, and they were lying the palms down. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Now, um, Luke 9. This is also echoed in Mar uh, Mark chapter 8, but let's go to Luke 9. Luke 9. Luke 9, uh, verses 23 on to verse 27. 23 on to verse 27. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever, shall set, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. What is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in, the in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. Talking about the second coming. But I tell you of a truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God there is a reference unto the spiritual kingdom. Okay, remember, kingdom of heaven is always a reference unto the physical, literal kingdom. Kingdom of God, more often than not, is a reference unto the spiritual kingdom. Okay? Acts chapter 1 and 2. Okay? The kingdom of God, the spiritual. Okay? Two different things that he's talking about and two different things he's describing. Okay? Again, if any man will come after me. Well, that's only of the elect. No, if any man. Free will. Okay? free will. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Ah, 14. In the beginning was the capital W word. Capital W word appears seven times in scripture. In the Bible, it appears six times because they take out 1 John 5, 7, which explains, tells you what the Godhead is, that God is one God, which is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Soul, God the Father. Body, the Word, made flesh. Okay? Anyway. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. You atheists are alive today because God allowed you to live. You have light in your eyes, life, because the Lord gave it to you. Okay? And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light, four times here in this context, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, 
the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, verse 12, but as many as received him, free will, okay? Free will, okay. right? Uh, free, free will is without scripture. I mean, it's from beginning, you have free will. You have free will. Romans chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 11. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. This in context is talking about lost people judging other lost people out of a context that they are their own standard. The judge not video, check that out. Okay? We judge because we have the Lord within us and we have a perfect standard. We judge ourselves and others by the perfect standard and the Lord that dwells within us. You lost people, you are your own standard. So you are the pot calling the kettle black. That's what this is talking about, okay? But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impentient heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, because you have made the wrong choice. You have chosen to worship yourself and be your own God. Yeah, okay? Who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient, continuance, and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth by choice, but obey unrighteousness, indign indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. And Calvinists say there is a respect, God is a respecter of persons, contrary to that right there. Oh, and by the way, this is this dispensation. Yeah, it is. Okay? Um, all right. Uh, Romans chapter 9. Verses 9 on verse 17. Oh, uh, excuse me. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 on verse 17. We covered this yesterday. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus by choice, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, not by coercion. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Be ashamed. And there is no diff For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher and teacher are two different things. But a preacher will teach, and a teacher will preach. Yes, preacher and teacher are two different things, but they encompass a lot of the same attributes. Okay? Because little Miss Christie said, oh, Jesus said not to be teachers, and just embarrassed herself entirely when we read Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 on to verse 20. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Sent by the Lord. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel by choice. For Isaiah said, Lord who hath believed by report. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the lowercase w, word of God. Okay? Now ultimately, 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're almost done. First Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and verse 6. 
And here's where you go to right away. And then the Calvinists will try to drag you along in the process of Romans 9. You can use this as well as the Calvinistic video that the Lord had me to do a couple, I think a couple years ago, to refute these Calvinists. Okay? This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all the elect to be saved. No. Who will have all men to be saved. God wants everyone to be saved. But guess what? Not everybody is going to be saved because God has ordained, called, chosen a specific way to attain salvation. His forgiveness. you got to be broken. you got to be contrite. And you got to fear the Lord. And you got to call upon His name. That's not step one, step two, step three. Are you saved, brother? No. That happens in one fell swoop. Any saint knows what that's talking about. But see, you atheists, you are your own God. You haven't been broken yet. Christy Burke was never broken. She was never saved. Okay? Okay? Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 19 on to verse 26. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. You come to the Lord on His terms, He saves you. You are sealed, once saved, always saved, until the day of redemption. This seal, that's what this is a reference unto. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But yet, you got these Calvinists who are men and dress up like women and cuss and swear a lot, as free gracers do, smoke cigarettes on, and it, it's, come on. Come on. Come on. Well, I can sin because His grace covers it all. Shut up. The Lord rebuke you. Okay? The Lord knows who those, who's, who's His are. Why? Because He has sealed them. It's not elect and non-elect like Calvin teaches. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. This is talking about there are some saints who serve the Lord living as bad examples. Yeah. You know, you could be a saint who's messed up and the Lord hasn't killed you yet. Why? Because he's using you as a bad example. Think about that, brethren. Let's continue. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Okay? And also looking at verse 20, wood and earth can be, um, you know, <laughs> they go up like a puff. You make clay, burn wood, gold and silver. You can melt gold and silver, but they are refined to be more precious. Okay? Get it? Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, self-sacrifice, peace with them, that call on the Lord out of a pure heart to prefer our own with our own people, saints. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Gentle is not tiptoeing, don't tell the sinner about their sin. No, it's taking the entirety of Scripture and cramming it down someone's throat and they get the deer in the headlights look like Mark the Messenger and you've lost a moment. The gentle is you gently give them morsels until they reach a time when you can give them more. That's what that means. Gentle is not, don't scare them. Don't tell them that they're a sinner going to hell. No, that's not what that means. Jew. Jew 22 and 23. And if some have compassion, making a difference, 23. And others save with fear, 
pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. With you atheists, like Catholics and stuff like that, we have to hit you hard to get your attention. Like a horse, you know, you got to take a twitch. When a horse won't go into the pen, you take the twitch and <laughs> smack it upside its head. That's what some of us got to do with you guys. That's what this is. Okay? You understand? Okay? The gentle is not being sissified. The gentle is not overburdening them with stuff they aren't ready to hear yet. Nor capable. You give them morsels. That's the gentleness that he's talking about. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, you atheists, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves, choice, out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Free will. You have a choice to make. Revelation chapter 3, the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation chapter 3. Which is 20 on the verse 22. Hmm. Uh, let me see. Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 on the verse 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, and Jesus is the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. There's only one throne. Okay? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. In Revelation chapter 14, we see something severe now. The mark of the beast. Which all this heresy is leading up for you who get left behind to take that mark of the beast. If you take the mark of the beast, you are damned to hell. There are no oopsies or anything. Okay? Because it's in your hand or in your forehead. And it's going to be such where it's going to make it possible so you will be against God because you have taken that. Doing something to your brain or something. I don't know. But, scripture is plain. Take the mark of the beast. You're done. People like to say, well, you can cut off your hand. And they go to, uh, if your eye offends, they pluck it out. No. No. Once you take that mark of the beast, don't believe uh, John MacArthur. Don't believe Kent Hovind. Don't believe Robert Breaker or Gene Kim. You can't cut off, pluck out. You take that mark of the beast, people, you're going to hell. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If you have a choice even in this, whether during the time of Jacob's trouble, for those of you who get left behind, you have a choice either to take the mark or not. If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. You're not going to go to hell and burn up and that's it. It's going to be forever and ever. Okay? And they have no rest day or night who worship the, who worship the beast and his image and whosoever if any man whosoever receiveth the mark of his name faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble here is the patience of the saints and here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus it's not by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble these free gracers are lying to you to deceive you to take the mark of the beast Oh, and about the uh, choice to take the mark of the beast, some will say, well, Satan forces people. No, he doesn't. Revelation 13, verse 16 on verse 18. 
and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that, my, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Okay? He causeth all. Not force. Okay? Not force. Hey, during the time you shake your shovel, you can get left behind. Okay? You want to go to the store, you're going to have to take the mark of the beast and damn yourself to hell. He's not forcing it upon you. Excuse me. Satan's not going to force it on you. But if you want to eat, remember, gold and silver is not going to be worth anything during the time of Jacob's trouble because Satan has to establish the mark of the beast. You have a choice even then. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. 666. Six, six which equates to www, World Wide Web. Dear people, you have free will. Free will is taught and demonstrated from Gen Genesis on to Revelation. You have free will. God does not want a robot. Okay? Elect and non-elect like Calvin teaches. <coughs> and as far as Miss Burke, she was never saved in the first place. She always had a problem with God. She was never saved. And she says, you know, Calvinism was something that messed her up. She was never saved in the first place. You have free will. Question is, what are you going to do with it? That is going to be it for this video. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching if you do. Please keep uh, each other in prayer. Please keep our brother Jeff in prayer. Apparently, I was misunderstood. He's going, not going to have surgery on the 15th, but he's going to go have a consultation. So I must have misunderstood. There was a miscommunication there. But please keep our brother Jeff in prayer. Please keep your servant in prayer. Please pray for one another. Hey, atheist, have you made it this far? Come, let us reason together, you and I. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.